I'm going to need some help this morning uh, reading some scriptures. So, uh, if I could get someone to uh, read the entire chapter 15. Just a uh, seven or eight verses there. Okay. Revelation. Yeah. Well, well, Barb, yeah. Then I saw in heaven another marvelous event of great significance. Seven angels were holding the seven last plagues, which would bring God's wrath to completion. I saw before me what seemed to be a glass sea mixed with fire, and on it stood all the people who had been victorious over the beast and the statue and a number representing his name. They were all holding harps that God had given them, and they were singing the song of Moses, the servant of God and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous deeds have been revealed. Then I looked and saw that the temple in heaven, God's tabernacle, was thrown wide open. The seven <coughs> angels who were holding the seven plagues came out of the temple. They were clothed in spotless white linen with gold sashes across their chests. Then one of the four living beings handed, beings handed each of the seven angels a gold bowl filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from God's glory and power. No one could enter the temple until the seven angels had completed pouring out the seven plagues. Fathers, we come to you this morning. We just thank you. Thank you that you've given us uh, this book of Revelation, that we can see what's coming. Father, it should stir us as well. Stir us to share what you've done for us, how you're working in our lives. And Father, helping us to understand what's to come. Lord, settle our hearts. Be with us. Guide my words. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> John now sees uh, these the, the seven angels. They're, they're coming out uh, of the temple. And... Um, it, it appears, okay, like a sea of glass. Now, as a sea of glass, you're talking about many of uh, many different types of, of type things that it may represent. But in this instance, it's probably represents the uh, the holiness. That separates God from sin. Okay. Now we see the the uh, uh, the sea is mingled with, with some some fire, uh, indicating some judgments to come. Those who re, uh, those who remain uh, faithful to Christ. And refuse to worship the Antichrist and then receive his mark, okay, are, are being lifted up. Notice what they sang. They sang, okay. 
they sang the song of, of Moses. Now, this is a very similar, okay, as you find it in, in Exodus 15. This is a very similar song when they came out of Egypt. Remember, um, God delivered them out of Egypt in, in, a, in a very powerful way. And we're going to see uh, some of the plagues that are represented in some of these bowls, okay, later on. We'll talk about that here shortly. But this song celebrates the ultimate deliverance through Christ's death on the cross and God's people, uh, you know, being redeemed from Satan. Just pray for me right now, okay? I'm having a little difficulty here. It praises God. It praises God's uh, um, deeds or amazing deeds. Whew. Give me time. Just, just for the visitors in the crowd here or whatever, I've, I've been having some little bit, some little vertigo stuff going on here. Okay, but uh, it praises God's amazing deeds, His justice, His truth, His holiness, and His righteousness. It goes far beyond what the Song of Moses indicated. Okay? Now, no one can enter the sanctuary of, of the Holy Temple here in heaven, okay, until these seven plagues of the seven angels are finished. Now, if someone would read uh, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 16. Have a volunteer for that? Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple say to the seven angels, Go your way and pour out on earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. So the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth. And horrible, malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Ugly, painful sores broke out. Of all the people who had taken the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Now, making reference to the Old Testament, if you go back to Exodus, chapter 9, verses 9 through 11, okay, this describes the malignant oozing ulcers or whatever that affected uh, Egypt when Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. Remember that? But this judgment, okay, is um, going to follow the, the Antichrist, or you know, follow those who, who follow the Antichrist and received his mark. Those are the people who are going to be um, affected, if you will. Okay, if you're not taking the mark, okay, you're going to have a rough time of it. Okay, you're not going to be affected with the, with the sores. Now, someone read verse, verse 3. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. The second angel 
Okay. okay. This, this is a second bowl that's being poured out. Okay. Now remember, one third, okay, one third of of marine life or whatever has already been taken care of or already been dead. Okay, now this this comes to the rest of them. Okay, and this this was referred to in Exodus chapter seven, uh, verses 20 and 24. Okay, very similar. However, everything in the sea is going to die. Now what happens when you uh, let a fish, you don't clean the fish or whatever, and it begins to decay and kind of kind of smells? Anybody been around that? Okay. That's nasty, isn't it? Okay. Can you imagine everything, all sea life, everything, okay, in the ocean is dead? Unimaginable stench and, and, and pollution. Aren't you glad we're not going to be here? That's, oof. Now, if I can have someone read uh, verses 4 through 7, if you would, please. double dip if you want. <laughs> then the third angel pulled, poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and, it, and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and you have given them blood to drink for it is their just due and I heard another from the altar saying even so Lord God Almighty true and righteous are your judgments the third angel pours his bowls into the springs and the rivers and all the fresh water now becomes blood. Where have we heard this before? In Egypt. Egypt? Absolutely. Absolutely. Then you got verse, verse 6 here. It says, For they have shed the, the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. What happens when there's no fresh water on the earth? Die. Eventually. Okay. And... Everybody's going to be scrambling to get, grab some of this stuff, aren't they? How's that going to work? Somebody's going to get rich. <laughs> but it's not going to... Folks, I, I, I can't emphasize enough how terrible of time it's going to be to be here. And yet, there's no repentance. I have a volunteer to, to read verses 8 and 9. Their sins and turn to God and give Him glory. 
in this judgment the sun's heat testifies or intensifies excuse me okay it starts scorching the people okay what what what's what's the layer that that protects us from the sun it's the ozone layer it, it, right okay it, it's going to be it's going to be removed can you imagine the direct sun who's had a sunburn that's really blistered I think I think we've all experienced that one once or twice okay um, Dan was really stupid one time <laughs> and now I'm just this particular time, okay, I'm stupid all the time. But anyway. And I'm driving back from Brunswick, Maine, where I was stationed, okay, and I'm driving back to Michigan. And it was good weather, okay, and I hung my arm out the whole way. So not only did it blister, it it cracked, it bled, and it got nasty. And I can't imagine, okay, people living in these conditions. Okay? It's going to be terrible, folks. However, however, I, 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 want, I want to emphasize this one thing. God's judgments are always designed to bring people to repentance. Always. Second Peter Let's turn here. Go to the book of Second Peter. Verse nine. Second Peter, verse nine. Or Second Peter three, I'm sorry. Verse nine. The Lord, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. What does everyone me everyone. everyone thank you now back to Revelation 16 someone could read verses 10 and 11 please Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their teeth in anguish, Power on. and they cursed the God of heaven for their pains and sores. But they did not repent of their evil deeds and turned to God. Fourth angel pours out his bowl of darkness. Now imagine this. In the daytime you're getting burnt. In the nighttime you can't see.
at this point, you've got painful ulcers. You've got lack of, uh, of drinking water. You've got intense heat. You've got thick darkness. And now, okay, people are going to start gnawing on their tongues simply because of the physical and psychological pain. However, notice in verse 11, it says, However, people continue to reject Christ. Wouldn't you think that... A logical mind would say, okay, Lord, I've had enough. This demonstrates this demonstrates what sin does to our mind. This demonstrates the, the nature of man in his sinful state. I will not. I will die first. Yes, you will. Man in his arrogance thinks he has it all together. Okay? Just just look at the news. Everybody's got the answer. Okay? If you don't have the answer, okay, you can Google it and find it. How arrogant of us. How arrogant of us. Verses 12 through 16, if you would, please. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies towards the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leaping from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God the Almighty. Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. The river Euphrates uh, is the longest, about 1,700 miles, and most important uh, river in the uh, Western Asia or whatever. Okay, it originates in Turkey, flowing through uh, Syria and Iraq, joins the Tigris before emptying into the Persian Gulf. It is mentioned, okay, in the last books of the, um, excuse me, it is, it is mentioned in, in the, uh, the first and the last books of the, of the Bible, okay, mentioned in, in Genesis, okay, and it's mentioned here in Revelation. Now, in Genesis 15, 18, okay, Abraham was promised this. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, To your descendants, I will give this land from the river of Egypt, which is Nile, the Nile River, okay, to the Euphrates. 
that is a bunch of lamb. Now the river was, was previously turned to, uh, to blood, now dries up. Okay. Now I know you, you see on, on, the, on Facebook and, and you see a lot of other things going on. Okay, it's drying up now, it's drying up now, and, and, and God's coming, and, and all the, the demons and stuff are, are being released. and Not yet, folks. Not yet. Then in verse... In verse 12, it talks about the uh, the identity here of, of the kings are unknown, okay? Though they're strongly debated, uh, the drying up of the Euph Euphrates is basically um, God's removal of the restraint of Satan's capacity to impact the world because whether you realize it or not okay, God is restraining Satan he is and now there's going to come a day okay we find these three unclean spirits or frogs if you will okay um, the dragon which represents Satan the beast and the false prophet is basically as we mentioned before the unholy trinity these spirits are capable of, of, of working miracles and uh, they go forth uh, under the kings and, and, and the whole world and, and deceive the whole world. You drop down in, in, to uh, verse 15, okay? And it says, Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his, his clothes and, and him so that he might so that he may not, may not go naked and shamefully, and shame, be uh, shamefully exposed. Okay? Now in verse 16, we, we find that this is the only mention in Scripture of Armageddon. There's no, there's no mountain named, okay? It, it means a, a mountain of uh, Megiddo. But it probably refers to the plain of Megiddo. Okay. This is about 60 miles north of, of uh, Jerusalem. It's about 14 to 20 miles um, wide, I guess. And Now some some see the same name, okay, Armageddon is representing what, what's going to happen in, in that great battle, if you will, okay. And yes, a case can be made for that. But the actual battle is not going to happen until chapter 19, 
uh, verses 11 through 21, uh, when Christ returns. Okay. But we see that the restraint from Satan is let loose. He's no longer restrained. How does that how does that impact the world? The world will be a terrible place. It should drive us, it should drive us to share our gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to share that with us, with others. We need to be reminded even here at, when, when is the last time we share the gospel with one another in Sunday school class. Well, don't we all know it? Yeah, we do. Shouldn't we share that story over and over and over again? Yes. We should. Absolutely. We can read uh, if someone could read seventeen through the end of the chapter. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a mighty shout came from the throne to the temple, saying, "It is finished." Then the thunder crashed and rolled, and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck. The worst since people were placed on the earth. The great city of Babylon split into three sections, and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So God remembered all of Babylon's sins, and he made her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island disappeared, and all the mountains were leveled. There was a terrible hailstorm, and hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds fell from the sky onto the people below. They cursed God because of the terrible plague of the hailstorm. Well, the, the, the demonic uh, armies of the um, of the world in preparation for the Battle of Armageddon, another bowl of wrath is poured out. It's poured out into the air and, and, and the angel des describes it is finished. It's done. The seventh bull causes the uh, causes voices and thunders and lightning and and there's a great earthquake uh, because the earthquake uh, of the great city is divided is divided into three okay and it, the city is called Sodom okay uh, but it's really Jerusalem okay it's the modern day Sodom if you will okay where Jesus was crucified. It's the beginning. Uh, the split, split, yeah. The split will be in three parts. And you go back to um, Zechariah, verse fourteen. And when Christ returns, he's going to stand on the, on the Mount of Olives, okay? But on, and Zechariah 14.4 says this, On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, okay? and it will be split east to west. 
Okay. The Great Babylon, okay, is the center uh, of the Antichrist kingdom, if you will, okay, his empire. A scene of an incredible horrors. Can you imagine now? Islands disappearing, mountains being leveled. What what kind of power is that does that take? It's a great hailstorm. Okay. Now the largest hailstone, okay, fell in fell in the United States, okay, on July twenty third, two thousand ten, in Vivian, South Dakota. Of course, you knew it had to be the Dakotas, but okay, it measured okay, eight inches in diameter. And 18 inches in circumference and weighed about two pounds. The hailstones broke roofs, broke through roofs and, and interior things and, and all that. Okay. Did anybody see the hailstone from Hoxie? Did you see that video or whatever? Okay. That was nasty. Okay. Now, the hailstones in the seventh, in this particular um, bowl, okay, are 50 times heavier. 50 times heavier. Destroying entire buildings and killing people. The survivors of the hailstone will curse God because of the plague. And because of the hail. And will be defiant and unrepentant. We see that in our world today. Of the unrepentance. What's good is now called bad. What bad is now called good and celebrated. First Thessalonians ten or one chapter one, verse ten. The latter part of that verse says, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. We're not going to be here, folks. We're not. To close this out today, and I know it's been very choppy and very poor presentation. I apologize for that. But if you hear nothing else this morning, hear this. We have the truth. We know the truth. We need to be spreading the gospel every chance we get. Use words if necessary.
God has let us be here in Hill City, in Graham County, for a reason. Each of us has opportunity, day in and day out, to share what Jesus has done in our life, personally. I encourage you to share that. Does Jesus make a difference? Yes, He does. I challenge you to, okay, to share. Use words if necessary. Let's pray.